Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. We all start out in basically the same way when we're building our mic lockers or our mic collections. We look for affordable microphones that can help us get started, that'll work on a variety of sources, maybe on guitars, drums, vocals, whatever we're recording or doing on stage. And then at some point, we want to upgrade those microphones to the next level. So today, we've brought together five different pairs of microphones. So we've got the somewhat more basic levels of these microphones, maybe a little more affordable, more entry level, or with fewer features. And then we've got their big siblings, the ones that have more features, maybe upgraded sound quality, the ones that cost a bit more, but that'll also do more for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare these pairs of microphones. I've got mics from Royer, Audio-Technica, Shure, AKG, and Neumann. Let's get started comparing these mics. We'll talk about the specs, the differences between the two, and also we'll hear these mics in action as well. Now, in some cases, we'll be moving from a microphone that's very affordably priced to one that's significantly more expensive, but that adds quite a bit of quality or quite a few more features. In other cases, it'll seem more like we're doing a lateral move, but we'll be getting a little different kind of mic, and so we're still upgrading our collection. Now, keep in mind as we're looking at these mics, in some cases, we are definitely upgrading from a more entry-level, affordable microphone to a more expensive, more feature-laden, or better-sounding microphone. In other cases, we're taking a little bit more of a lateral move to add features, maybe to add some capabilities that we didn't have before. In either case, just because you've added a new microphone doesn't mean the old one should be tossed away or that you even want to sell it. You build a mic locker by continually adding colors to your paint palette. You add more and more microphones that do different things, have different capabilities, different sounds, and that's how you're able to cover even more sources when you're recording or you're on stage. Let's begin with a pair of Audio-Technica microphones. I've got the AT2020 and the AT4050. Now these look fairly similar, they're both condenser microphones, but they come in at very different price points. At the time of this filming, the 2020 comes in around $100, while the 4050 comes in somewhere around $700. So a big jump there. Let's take a look at what's different between these two microphones. Functionally and design-wise, there are some differences between the two. The AT2020 is what's called a back electret microphone, which means that the capsule is permanently charged. The AT4050, on the other hand, is actually a true condenser, meaning that it runs off a DC bias voltage. Both of them require phantom power, but they operate slightly differently. The 2020 comes with a hard stand mount, whereas the 4050 comes with a shock mount. That isolates it a little better in the studio if you're trying to prevent rumble or stand-borne noise from getting into your microphone. The polar patterns are different. With the 2020, we have cardioid polar pattern, which is the one you're going to use most of the time in the studio and certainly on stage. But the 4050 gives you more versatility. It can do cardioid, but it can also do bi-directional or figure of eight, and it can also do omnidirectional, which means all around the microphone in a sphere. So again, more versatility with the 4050. Another design feature, the 2020 is actually a mid-sized diaphragm. It's actually 0.6 inches or so, whereas the 4050 is considered a large diaphragm microphone. It's something like 0.85 inches, close to one inch, which is what normally determines being a large diaphragm microphone. And that's going to affect the sound quality slightly. The two microphones also have different maximum sound pressure level handling. The 2020 will do up to 144 dB. The 4050 will do 149 dB, but it also has a 10 dB pad that you can switch on, which will take it up to a maximum of 159 dB. So it'll handle any source that you put it in front of. Having said that, 144 dB is extremely loud, so this is still going to work great in front of a loud guitar cabinet or in front of a kick drum. Believe it or not, the frequency response is actually broader on the 2020, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, whereas on the 4050, it's from 20 to 18 kilohertz. In either case, you've got plenty of detail on top end. You'll capture all those high-end harmonics that you need. A few other specs to consider. Dynamic range on the 2020 is 124 dB, while on the 4050, it's 132 dB. Signal to noise is 74 dB over here and 77 dB on the 4050. And self noise is quite a bit quieter with the 4050. It's just 17 dB, whereas on the 2020, it's 20 dB. That 3 dB of noise is quite a bit different when you're working with a very quiet instrument or a very delicate source that you're recording. Now that we've looked at some of the differences between these two microphones, let's hear what they sound like in action. We'll put both microphones up on Jacob Dupre's vocals. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Steam down the river down to New Orleans. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams and steam down the river 
down to New Orleans. Now let's take a look at two very common dynamic microphones. And these are microphones I'm asked about all the time. What's the difference between the Shure SM58 and the Shure Beta 58A? Now the big difference between these is the magnet structure. The Beta 58A uses a neodymium magnet, and that has some results as far as the differences between the microphones when we're talking about specs and sound quality. Both of these are classic handheld microphones, commonly used for vocals on stage, but also in the studio. Among the differences between them is the polar pattern. The SM58 has a cardioid polar pattern, which means basically a heart-shaped polar pattern toward the front of the microphone. With the Beta 58A, we have a super cardioid polar pattern. That means a sphere in the front, a lobe in the back, and it rejects sounds very well from the sides. And this is great if you have two monitors that are placed in front of you. With the 58, you'd be better off with one monitor directly in front of the singer. The Beta 58A with that neodymium magnet is actually 4 dB hotter on the output, and it has more top end and more bottom end than the 58. Now those can be pluses or they can be minuses depending on what you're doing. If you have a really powerful voice with a lot of top end, it might get too bright and you might have too much output from this microphone. In that case, a 58 might be a better choice. So the difference is there, you just have to match which microphone you want to the voice that you're working with. Two other big differences, the Beta 58A has a hardened grill, and this is going to resist dents better than the grill that's on the SM58. The SM58, of course, is legendary for its ruggedness. The Beta 58A is even more rugged. Finally, the Beta 58A has a pneumatic shock mount inside, and that helps to reduce handling noise, so it'll be even quieter than the standard SM58. Once again, let's put these mics to work on Jacob Dupre's vocals. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams and steam down the river down to New Orleans. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams and steam down the river down to New Orleans. Now let's take a look at another classic microphone, the AKG C414 XLS and the C214, which is a more affordable, slightly scaled down version. Both of these are condenser microphones. The 214 is a cardioid only microphone, whereas the 414 actually has nine different polar patterns. So a wide range of options there for selecting the proper polar pattern for your room and for your sound source. Sound pressure level handling is different between the two, both because of the amount the microphones will handle, but also because of the pads that are built in. The 214 has a 20 dB pad, and this gives us up to 156 dB max SPL. The 414 actually gives us more options. You can turn the pad off or set it to 6 dB, 12 dB, or 18 dB for a maximum of 158 dB SPL. We have a single high pass filter on the 214 at 160 hertz. And on the 414, we have a three position filter at 40 hertz, 80 hertz, and 160 hertz. So again, more versatile for matching this to the source that you're recording and the amount of low frequency content you want to capture. Signal to noise is substantially different between these two microphones. 13 dB on the C214, 6 dB on the C414. It's an extremely quiet microphone, and that'll make a big difference when you're recording a delicate sound source. Signal to noise ratio is quite different as well. 83 dB on the 214 and 80 8 dB on the 414. That 5 dB difference is significant when we're talking about signal to noise ratios with the microphones. As we saw with some of the earlier microphones, the C214 is an electret design, meaning that the capsule is permanently charged. On the 414, we have a true condenser design. Both these microphones are extremely versatile. You could use them on voice, you could use them on instruments, just about anything you want, live or in the studio. To hear the differences, let's put these up in front of a steel string acoustic guitar. <laughs> Now let's take a look at two Neumann microphones. I've got the TLM-102 and the TLM-107. Now there are some significant differences between these two mics as well. The TLM-102 is a cardioid microphone, 
whereas the TLM-107 has five polar patterns. Max SPL here is 144 dB. On the TLM-107, the max SPL is 141, but that jumps up to 153 when we engage the 12 dB pad. There's also a 6 dB pad setting on the 107. Self noise with these microphones is fairly close, 12 dB here, 10 dB on the 107, and likewise the signal to noise ratio is fairly similar at 82 dB and 84 dB. The 107 does have a high pass filter for cutting those low frequencies and rumble out, and you can set that for 40 Hz or 100 Hz. So all this adds up to a much more versatile microphone with the 107. The 102 is a straight ahead microphone that sounds fantastic on a wide range of sources, vocals, guitars, drums, all kinds of instruments, but the 107 is going to give you a lot more options for capturing sources in the studio. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams and steam down the river down to New Orleans. Won't you come along with me to the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams and steam down the river down to New Orleans. Now let's take a look at two ribbon microphones from Royer. I've got the R10 and the R121, with the R121 being the flagship ribbon in Royer's lineup. These microphones are similar, but they also have some differences between them. For example, the ribbon inside the R121 is field replaceable. That's awesome if you're on the road or you're out working on location. The R10 has a custom transformer inside, which helps to maintain a low distortion level. It also has a multi-layer windscreen. That multi-layer windscreen lets you get closer up on sources without danger of wind and plosives, but it also helps to control proximity effects, so when you're closer in, you're not going to be overwhelmed with low frequencies. On the other hand, the R121 has a powerful proximity effect, so when you get it in close, you're going to get a big, full, rich sound. As far as the top end goes, the R121 is said to have a little smoother top end, still with plenty of detail, while the R10 has a little bit brighter top end. And again, that comes from that multi-layered windscreen, as well as the transformer design and the way the microphone is configured. The R110 also makes a great choice on stage because it does have a shock-mounted ribbon inside, so you're going to have less stage noise, less rumble being transmitted through the microphone itself. And we have a little bit different sound pressure level handling as well. The R121 will handle very high sound pressure level, 135 dB, but the R10 will handle an amazing 160 dB SPL. That's an incredibly loud sound source. This is not going to distort no matter what you put it in front of. One other difference, the R121 comes with a shock mount, whereas the R10 comes with a hard stand mount. Let's listen to these microphones in their classic application on an electric guitar amplifier. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this look at what happens when you level up your microphone collection. We all start out with entry-level, affordably priced microphones that, if they're these microphones, sound fantastic. But we've also taken a look at what happens when you level up to the next level of microphones in the same family. More features, sometimes better sound quality, more applications, more versatility. Lots changes when you move to the next level microphone. If you have questions about any of these microphones we've looked at today or any other microphones available at Sweetwater.com, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Music